Hello, Graham Roberts here. What we're going to do in this tutorial is show how in C-sharp one can create a combo box inside a form with a text box and enable it to act as a selector for something like say a list of courses inside and display the course selected in the text box or to use a button to cause the thing selected in the combo box to appear in the text box. You don't need to have this button. You can use the on change event handler that's attached to a combo box. But let's not go too far too fast. Let's go back to the beginning. First of all, we create using, in this case, Visual C Sharp 2010 Express Edition, a project. I've called mine using a combo box part two. I've called the um, little program I'm writing using a combo box as a selector, but none of that is important. I've also used the text value of the form to say course selector here, as you can see, but again, uh, there it is down there, that's not important either. What is significant is that I have drawn onto my form using the toolbox a combo box, this here, which displays an editable text box with a drop down list of permitted values and I've drawn a button onto the form raises an event when the user clicks it and so that we can see output uh, a text box that enables the user to enter text and provide multi-line editing and password character masking this could have been a label by the way it didn't have to be a text box anyway they're the three controls we put onto the form inside the combo box I've put some items already, I've iterated them as it were. So if I go to items on the um, property, here we have a collection, if I click the ellipsis, that's where my arrow is at the moment, we can see what I've put in there. I've put in astronomy, mathematics, science, art, history and English. If I wanted to add another one, another subject like music for example I can do so it's just a simple list I press OK and now in there is stored an array of those particular courses okay well let's see how it runs that's it running let's bring it over so you can see it the, this is the one that we're running. Um, let's choose mathematics and mathematics pops into the text box. Let's choose English and so on. If I didn't have this working with the on change selector um, handler I could still achieve it by clicking choose course. We're not seeing that happen because it's already done it but it would take the course and pl place it in the text box. We don't. We we have an um, embarrassment of riches here, in that we're achieving the same result using a button handler and an on uh, selection uh, change um, handler. Now let's see the code that's behind those. If we um, look at the code. we have a combo box one selected value changed where we have the statement text box one text equals combo box one text property so whatever we've selected goes into the text box when it changes the selection changes and we've also got the button click handler where exactly the same thing is happening if that is clicked the 
control uh, is clicked. Now there's not much remaining to explain except a little bit maybe about how the combo box selected value changed handler came about. When we drag a button onto a form the handler is, is generated just by double clicking the button. When we bring a combo box onto a form if we double click it we get a selected index changed. Now we could use that but it seems more straightforward to me to ask for a selected value changed in this context. But if we wanted to use this one here we would put this kind of statement into there. So the question remains how did we actually get this because it's not what you get when you double click the box. And that introduces you to the properties box. I'm just take this out so we can see it a little bit more clearly. That it has not just properties um, in the straightforward state way, but also has events. And if I click on this lightning icon, we can see the events that it has. It has selected index changed event and selected value changed event. I got the selected value changed by double clicking here. And similarly, I could have got the selected index changed by double clicking here as well, except I got it from double clicking the control on the form. As I said at the start, this is a very simple form. What it's doing may be very useful in the context of what you need to do. That is, select something from a list and show your selection in a label or a text box. Perhaps when you click a button, or as we've seen, you don't have to click a button. You can just use the uh, selected change event handler by using the lightning icon in the properties window. Now if I click back here it will take me to the properties again. So you can cycle or toggle between the ordinary state properties and the event handlers. So I'll just show you it running again and as you can see you just select something and it appears here. Or you could click the button. What I've just done is to comment out the statement inside the combo box one selected value changed event handler and I'm going to run the program again so you can see that if I click the button it appears if I click English here nothing happens until I click the button which of these two methods is best for you will depend on the context of what you need to do the selected selection changing um, probably will suit you more often than waiting for a button to be clicked. But sometimes that's not so. You want to give someone an opportunity to change until they decide that's the one for them and they click the button. Hope that's been useful. This is Graham Roberts saying enjoy your C-sharp programming. <laughs>